Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. We're definitely going to skip a lot of the formalities today. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your Monday afternoon to join me today for this newest Weather Center segment. Please do me a huge favor. If you are watching this video, please share it around. Get it across the YouTubes as much as you can, especially if you have family, friends, or relatives, or any loved ones along the Gulf Coast states. We have a very dangerous, severe weather event beginning to take shape, and I'm going to take you through all the incidental data that I'm looking at as of this morning and early afternoon today that's going to encompass a lot of what we see down there over the next 48 to 72 hours, spanning even further east, possibly into the Florida Panhandle and the Mid-Atlantic coastline, as well as this system continues to evolve. So please do me that favor if you can. This is a life-threatening situation. I know I don't typically say that on this channel, but we are forecasting potential strong tornadoes, F2 or greater, with the ingredients we have beginning to take shape down across Louisiana, parts of Arkansas, moving into Mississippi, and further east you go as this system continues to develop. I'm going to warn you in advance, this video is going to be a little different. We're going to look at a lot of different data and forecast models and analysis data that I typically don't bring up because a lot of this stuff we've covered has been more associated with the tropics. And we are going to start on NHC's homepage just to kind of dispel what may be circulating the weather sphere across social media this afternoon. We're going to begin on National Hurricane Center's homepage and we're only going to spend maybe a minute or two at best talking tropics because in all reality there's nothing I'm really concerned about in the immediate future and I don't anticipate we're going to have have anything form, especially in our more sensitive areas like the Caribbean Sea for that matter. This area highlighted in orange now at a 40% chance of development over the next seven days is something we were discussing and kind of toying around with the idea of seeing a low level spin break away from that trough axis that helped to develop that almost intercontinental looking storm that brought tremendous amounts of rainfall to Jamaica, Hispaniola, parts of the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, and affected portions of Bermuda for that matter as well. We are starting to look at that low level circulation beginning to break away and move off to the east. Formation probabilities are looking pretty good with this, and I do think we're going to get a subtropical cyclone out of it. This could steal the name of a subtropical storm, Vince. I do think this definitely has the potential to do so. It could possibly be a weather player for our Azores up there in the North Atlantic, Northeast Atlantic for that matter, but it's really going to pose no harm or threat to anybody, even Bermuda, as it continues to work itself away from that general area before deepening down and possibly taking on a subtropical storm status. This area down here, Invest 99L, I'm a little perplexed as to why National Hurricane Center has designated this all across the models. I'm not seeing any sort of development from this, and it doesn't even seem like a lot of the precipitation action is going to make it to Central America to pose any substantial effect. As a matter of fact, looking at our precipitable water and our relative humidity, which I will show you here in a moment, a lot of the stuff that is expected to intensify their thunderstorm activity is actually going to come off of the garden variety thunderstorms we've been witnessing across northern South America, Colombia, Venezuela, parts of Panama and Costa Rica, kind of funneling up in that general area with the prevailing easterly flow we have across the Caribbean. There's just too much dry air to get this invest area going. It is highlighted for a 10 for 10 over the next 48, also up to a seven day period. I don't think this is going to go much higher. And I think honestly, by Wednesday, this is going to be scrubbed from our charts. We're looking at our North Atlantic AOI with the 12Z European model. And if you focus more so on the Central Atlantic, here goes that low beginning to undergo cyclogenesis and deepen down to 995 millibars. It is still attached at this current point. But once you begin to see a breakaway right about there. This is Thursday at 06Z, so we're looking at early morning on Thursday the 23rd, Thanksgiving Day. This looks like that low will finally be its own individual entity. It'll kind of hang out out there in between steering currents, and then once it finally begins to develop and deepen down, this is when it could take on tropical, or I should say subtropical storm intensity, deepening to a 996, 993, and continuing to deepen down as it passes just potentially to the west of our Azores Islands up there, and then finally once again getting entrenched by the polar front jet activity running across the North Atlantic, supporting these areas of high pressure in between. So all in all, that is one of the areas I do think we could see some subtropical cyclone development. It's not going to pose any credible threat to a lot of locations. We could see some increased winds, wave action, and rainfall activity with the Azores Islands up there as it makes a close pass. But all in all, guys, nothing to really be concerned about. And then if you look down over the Caribbean, you can kind of see a little bubble of low pressure down there and some moisture associated with it right about in through here, if you can see where my cursor is drawing a small circle. And if you go to the 48 hour, Mark, notice how it's already very elongated, and then at 72 hours, it's almost unrecognizable, kind of butting up against the coastline, but when we go to our relative humidity product, you can see a lot of that action is actually associated with what's occurring in the eastern Pacific monsoonal trough, a lot of the activity associated with what's been going on in Panama, parts of Colombia, Venezuela, trickling off to the west because of that prevailing easterly flow we have over the Caribbean. We're going to look at our zero Z probabilities very briefly, and if you look as we go through the loop, we very quickly lose probabilities in the Caribbean, and the probabilities actually 
actually go up with that system as I showed you on the 12Z MSLP Euro product. As it begins to transition off to the north and east, it does seem like it has the capability to go fully subtropical before reattaching itself to the jet to the north, and that's when you start to see those probabilities really wash out. General thinking right now is it's going to pass to the west of our Azores. So if you are viewing this video from the Azores Islands, it doesn't seem like this is going to be a very, very substantial threat for you guys. But of course, we'll continue to monitor, especially if this does manage to steal home base and take on the name of Vince, an ever anticipated name for over the last month and a half, it feels like now. So here we go. This is our 12Z GFS relative humidity product. And as you see down there, there is a little bit of sliver of relative humidity or moisture associated with that invest area. But you can see it's sandwiched between very, very dense dry air. There's a mid-level cyclone or an anti-cyclone parked over the Western Caribbean, helping to funnel a lot of that very, very potent dry air down across the Eastern Caribbean. And you can see, guys, as you go over the next couple days, this is tomorrow night going into Wednesday morning. It's essentially going to have the life squeezed entirely out of it. This is going to be your invest area right there, kind of already getting suffocated by a lot of this very, very pungent dry air that's wrapped around a lot of its north and eastern side. A little bit of dry air trying to work its way in along the south and western quadrants for that matter. And you can see a lot of this rainfall activity or relative humidity is associated with the east pack. Parts of what we have in terms of thunderstorm coverage for Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, just naturally funneling into that general area because of that mid-level anti-cyclone still helping to pick up that moisture down to its south and funnel it over Central America. Finally, if you go beyond the 72-hour mark, you can see what's left of Invest 99 becomes very heavily entrained between what we have occurring thanks to our subtropical jet over the Gulf of Mexico and the southeast United States and this very dense layer of dryer that is expected to remain over top the Caribbean. So for a lot of you guys out there who had to deal with very, very substantial flooding over the last several days, there is a lot of relief on the way and it is expected to kind of stay out there for quite some time before we begin to see our rain chances ramp back up. Looks like you're going to have a nice little time to take a sigh of relief and kick back and enjoy the better weather, at least until we start to see rain chances go back up. All right, this is the main event, guys. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, if you are watching it, please, this is not for the views. This is not for subscribers. This is simply because we need to get our eyes on this setup. We need to start talking about this immediately because this severe event, this outbreak is imminent and is already starting to take shape on satellite and radar. You can see we still have an enhanced threat across the southeast, particularly across Louisiana, very easternmost extent of Texas, Mississippi, to where we can not only see widespread severe weather phenomena to include strong convective winds 50 knots or greater, hail upwards of one inch, if not much greater than that with these systems as they begin to develop. We're expecting very, very heavily sheared, tilted, and strong updraft cores with a lot of these individual cells, so a large hail threat is expected. And of course, because of the dynamics we have in play, which I'll take you through here momentarily, SPC do thinks we could have isolated bouts of F2 tornadoes ranging all the way up to potential F5s. And the only reason they have that highlighted is not because they're predicting F2, F3, F4, F5, is more so because we're seeing very, very similar environmental parameters coming together with where we do have our very, very strong supercellular storms out associated in western Texas with the dry line or over the Great Plains Tornado Alley where you do get a lot of those very strong, almost wedge-style tornadoes. So the same parameters are coming together, and that's exactly why I urge you guys, whoever is watching this right now, please share this, spread the word, let's make sure we have multiple methods to receive warning data as we go throughout the rest of the day today, and unfortunately as we brace for this tornadic event overnight tonight and into early portions of tomorrow. You can see day two is looking a little bit better, but you can see that the severe threat still lingers for parts of Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, spanning into Georgia now at this point, and I do think they're going to continue to maybe elevate where we have that marginal risk, that darker shading of green, expanding through the Carolinas because this system looks like it's going to continue to get its act together, amplify because of the shortwave activity we have at 500 millibars and the very, very robust jet streams we have not only to the north with the polar front jet, but also our El Nino subtropical jet fueling this system, fueling that low-level jet and that stark contrast in temperature and dew point gradients. This is what we have going on right now. There is a large region in red here highlighted for a tornado watch, and we also have severe thunderstorm watches as well. It's very hard for you guys to see. There's a little bit of a very, very light tan box around that same general region, but you can already see on radar we have very, very explosive thunderstorms already starting to take shape, and a lot of these very individual cells are going to take full advantage of the directional and vertical wind shear we have throughout the atmosphere. You'll see it very easily on the satellite when we get to that point, but I'll also show you some analysis charts that further support how much of an unstable overall just atmosphere we have to fuel just about every single severe weather phenomenon you could get out of a setup like this. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, we're going to look at a few things that I don't really pull up on this channel, but I want to try to educate you guys as best as I can to the best of my ability 
ability without overloading you, if that makes sense. This is going to be our 850 millibar analysis chart. The key takeaways I need you guys to pull from this is if you look, we have our wind barbs right in through here. This is at 12 Zulu earlier this morning. We have already 25 to 35 knot winds coming out of the south. This indicates that low level jet, that good push of southerly moisture and southerly warm air to help amplify our relative humidity and our dew points and overall increase our buoyancy down at the surface to enhance these thunderstorms as they get going. It's already taking shape. And if you look at these red lines, the isotherms here, you can see just how much of a contrast we have down across that general region. This is another version of our 850 millibar level. And once again, you can see the same picture more or less communicated. Our low level jet is establishing itself across Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, moving into the Texarkana area, all the way up into the Midwest region, almost where you can identify where your warm sector is. If you look, there's some isobaric troughing right in through here. That is where I do believe the leading edge of our warm air mass is currently. If you just look at where the isobaric troughing is and the way we have a cyclonic turn in our wind flow. If you look to the south of where my line is drawn, we have due southerly winds. And then just to the north of where my line is drawn, we transition to a more easterly flow around the northern apex of our low pressure beginning to develop over Kansas, Oklahoma. If you look really closely, if you can zoom in from where you're viewing, you probably won't be able to see it from your perspective, but there are also some very, very light green lines right up and through here showing where our strongest moist air advection is occurring and that's also going to help to amplify the severe weather threat because the dry air in the mid-levels is going to cause what is called dry air entrainment in the mid-levels of these storms and believe it or not even though throughout tropical season we mentioned how dry air even at the beginning of this video dry air typically impedes tropical cyclone formation dry air in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere can actually help to enhance the severe weather threat with these storms in way of having more dense air for these updrafts to fuel on to feed off of and to amplify what kind of hail and convective winds we get whenever they decide to rain themselves out. Very sciencey, but that's the main reason I wanted to discuss why dry air actually helps thunderstorms in comparison to all of us mentioning dry air hurting our tropical cyclones. HRRR simulated reflectivity is looking very alarming. As you go through the first couple of hours, you can already see it is verifying very well with what we saw on our live radar feed. And as you take this through the next six hours, we're expecting very, very strong individual cells to develop within this line of rainfall and shower activity. If you look very closely, once again, it's probably not going to be visible from your area, but a lot of these storms are taking on what look to be a teardrop shape. And the reason that they're taking on that teardrop shape, kind of like this, that's an indication that at the surface, all the way up to where the tops of these thunderstorms are associated or where they kind of bottom out, if you will, in the uppermost portions of the troposphere, that is because all of that rotational directional shear I'd mentioned to you. So at the surface, that storm is rotating and turning up upwards and upwards like this. And that's exactly why we have the tornado parameters coming together like we've noticed, the hail parameters, the strong winds, and you can best believe we're going to see very frequent cloud to ground lightning with this. So be very careful and again, stay in place. Do not go outside during this event. This is a very dangerous situation. You're going to want to have a radar tool near you. If possible, use your mobile device. Keep your mobile device charged. Make sure you have it ready and readily available on loud. Do not have do not disturb on. I'm guilty of that as well you do not want do not disturb on during this event. You want every way possible to receive National Weather Service updates and warnings for your local area. You continue through this loop and you can see that line really does not give up. And in fact, as we go into the day tomorrow, we actually see a bit of a resurgence of the severe weather beginning to take shape near Pensacola over Montgomery, Alabama, spanning pretty much all of Alabama into Georgia for that matter, up through Tennessee, starting to hit the western periphery of the Carolinas and some residual leftover stuff still coming out of the Gulf of Mexico for New Orleans and into lower Biloxi, Mississippi area. On the left-hand side, we're going to look at our buoyancy, and on the right-hand side, we're going to look at our supercell parameters, because as you can see, we have quite a bit of buoyancy. Basically, what this is, is your convective available potential energy. And in layman's terms, all that means is how fast are your air parcels or your particles that condense into clouds going to rise if simply lifted by daytime heating and overall just regular buoyancy, as the name implies, how they're going to float in the atmosphere. And as you can see, these these color codings indicate we have well upwards of 1,500 to almost 2,000 joules per kilogram over inland areas of Louisiana, Texas, into Mississippi. You only need about 800 to 1,000 joules per kilogram typically to realize very potent thunderstorms. So anything higher than that is already going into that severe weather territory. And it goes without saying, if you turn over to the right-hand side, you can see our supercell parameter is coming together very aggressively, especially over interior Louisiana and Mississippi as we go between the hours of, they're already starting to amplify now as a matter of fact, we're already technically behind the curve. If you haven't been paying attention,
attention to this while you're watching this video and as I'm recording. But it looks like our main event for Louisiana is going to start around the 20Z, 21Z time frame, going all the way through to about maybe 03Z, 04 Zulu. So in actuality, that's going to last until about 11 p.m. to midnight tonight. So we'll have lots of time with the sun down to where a lot of this severe action is going to be taking place and you're not going to be able to see it. And that's when this really gets extremely dangerous and I can't emphasize that enough in this video. Here's another analysis chart. This is actually just going to be our theta E and all you need to know about theta E is essentially it's going to show you the differences between air masses and overall moisture temperature content in the environment. And you can see it goes without saying as you take this through time, look at how that low pressure begins to develop over Oklahoma, parts of Texas, moving its way further off to the south. And look at all this advection, this warm air advection taking place across Louisiana, Mississippi, the southeastern Gulf Coast of Texas. This is where you're ripe for all this severe weather activity. As those drier theta E's come in on the backside of this low and we have that modified polar air coming in to interact with that warm air, it's going to act like a ramp. It's going to shove that up, kind of like a snow shovel you'd use after heavy snow, like so, and scoop all that moisture up and form those very intense thunderstorms. Finally, last but not least, we are going to close out with the infrared because you can honestly see immediately just by looking at the satellite, regardless of those storms already forming up, you can already get a big picture view of exactly how unstable the environment is. I'll go ahead and pause it for you guys so we can do a little bit of very close level analysis. In the low levels, these gray shades of clouds, you can see the winds rushing up out of the south, but then if you look at these storm clouds themselves, they're rushing off to the east like so. And if you kind of do the math, if you use a little bit of basic geometry, as you ascend the atmosphere from the ground level or the low levels where those gray shades of clouds are up to where those very, very robust thunderstorm tops are, you can imagine that you're very quickly going to transition from this to this. I know it might be a little hard to hear me, but this is your directional shear, your vector wind shear that's going to help to get these thunderstorms rotating, producing hail and potentially very, very aggressive tornadoes. We could even see long lasting tornadoes because of the environmental parameters we have here. This isn't going to be a distinct frontal line where they'll spin up and die kind of very pulse like. These could be a little bit longer lasting. I'm not talking half an hour to an hour, but more than a couple seconds, if not more than a couple of minutes, because there are going to be embedded mesos cyclones and individual isolated supercells within these thunderstorms as they form up. We're going to close out the video here, guys. I know this has been very, very informative, very almost fire hose like in all the information that I've given to you. The key takeaway, again, I can't emphasize this enough, is be prepared, be on the lookout, maintain your situational awareness. You will probably lose sleep tonight watching as this situation unfolds. And I honestly encourage that you do not go to bed, especially if you don't have a mobile device or some way to get in touch and receive those National Weather Service alerts as they come out for your neighborhood. We will be doing a lot Live continuous coverage tonight at 8 p.m. We are not going to be doing a tropics talk because I don't feel the need to talk tropics with everything happening over the southeast. We're also going to discuss exactly how this is going to evolve over the next three to five days and talk about how we could be seeing some severe weather almost similar to this, maybe not to this full extent, but very similar to that as El Nino continues to amplify out there over the Pacific, bringing in our chances for severe weather all the way up, not only through the Thanksgiving holiday and this weekend, but going forward through the end of November and into December here in Central Florida. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. If you aren't already, please subscribe to this channel, especially if you are brand new and just receiving this as my first segment. I plan to keep you guys fully ahead of this storm as much as I possibly can, as much as I am physically capable of doing so. Thank you so much for your continued support. We will see you tonight at 8 p.m. for our Weather Center Live segment. We're going to be covering all this, looking at satellite radar, and also digesting exactly what this winter time has in store for us, because this is only round one. I can guarantee that to you guys right now. This is only round one and it is likely going to continue to get more intense as we go through this El Nino winter altogether. But you can guarantee Weather Center Nazario is going to be riding out the storm with you every step of the way. We'll see you later tonight, guys. Until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.